Welfare reform means breaking the cycle of poverty, true self-sufficiency, an even-handed approach. The question arises, why now? Well, this has been years in the making. I can tell you it's been three years for me that I've been working on this. And I think it's important that we're here on January 2nd and why we're talking about this to set the stage for budget negotiations going forward. But more importantly, the right time to work on welfare reform and workforce development is when the economy is growing and jobs are available. Not when the economy is down, but when we're actually growing and there are jobs out there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. And under the leadership of Speaker Terzai when he was policy chair, Dave Reed when he was policy chair with the Poverty Initiative, and currently with Chairman Benninghoff, these have been a focus on fo of policy on focusing on welfare reform and workforce development. I have to give credit as well to, to my friend and colleague, Mike Tobash. Uh, we would not be here today with all the work that we've done without him being here, and he deserves a shout out as well. But this is about setting up our, our state in the direction of growth. In Luzerne County, employers like Medico Industries, I just talked with Tom Medico just a couple days ago, they're hiring 100 more people, but literally can't get people to walk in the doors, can't get people to show up on time, can't get people to pass a drug test. Berkshire Hathaway is growing in Luzerne County. Chewy.com needs more people. The government must partner with, private sec with the private sector to break the cycle of poverty, turning people who are receivers of tax dollars to contributors and truly bending cost curves in our budget. The overarching theme is people are happier and healthier when they take pride in their work. We need to protect the vulnerable while helping people transition from dependency to self-sufficiency. Our message is not cost savings, although it's certainly in that, in that perspective of which it's veiled. It's removing the barriers for real people who face uh, uh, the, uh, system that's created by the government where people are empowered to achieve. Our welfare reform motivation is not fiscal, but human. People want to work, but the system is failing them. This is about unlocking people's potential. It's time to restore the working class. We need to support Pennsylvanians who truly need it. And history proves the best antidote to poverty is economic freedom. As I said before, people want to work, but we've created a system that isolates them and encourages them to rely on failing bureaucratic systems. Our system has robbed too many Pennsylvanians of hope. It's time we give people a genuine path out of poverty. 23,200 more Pennsylvanian families fell below the poverty line in 2015 than in 2010. Our welfare system isn't helping the poor, it's trapping them in this cycle of poverty. A system that slashes help at the first sign of independence is self-defeating. This isn't about reforming the welfare experience, it's about freeing people from welfare. It's a complete restructuring and rethinking of our responsibility to those in poverty. Work requirements, for example, are helping thousands of people rise above poverty to independence. After Kansas implemented work requirements for able-bodied adults in 2013, almost 13,000 Kansans were freed from welfare. Nearly 60% of those leaving food stamps found employment within one year, and their incomes rose by an average of 127% per year. What's more, the number of able-bodied adults on food stamps dropped by 75%. Overwhelming majorities of those in poverty, 81% uh, of those in poverty and the non-poor 91 percent support work requirements, according to a survey by the LA Times and the American Enterprise Institute. The best anti-poverty reform is work, and we should embrace it. Welfare as a way of life can crush the human spirit, take away people's dignity, and leave them stuck in poverty. Work requirements help people escape the poverty trap. The work first state welfare reforms in the 1990s moved millions of Americans back into the labor force. Now it's time for an update. Work requirements for able-bodied adults means more resources which can be divided, can be devoted to those who truly need it. Recently, public welfare became the largest department in the state's general fund budget, surpassing education spending. But we are still not seeing people rise from poverty. 40 cents of every taxpayer dollar funds human services. This year, the total Department of Human Services spending is $12.2 billion in the general fund, $21.3 billion including federal funds. That's about 40% of the general fund budget and 80% of the uh, federal funds in the general fund budget. But these do dollars aren't always getting to people who truly need them. 
Growing welfare spending is diverting funds from other priorities like education and transportation. What's worse is that our welfare system is, is trapping people in poverty, robbing them of dignity, and not serving those who need it most. Human services spending has grown by more than 100% since 2000. But this spending has failed to lift people out of poverty. Work requirements, on the other hand, have been proven to help individuals escape poverty and realize self-sufficiency. Total Medicaid enrollment is 2.8 million, about 700,000 due to the expansion in Pennsylvania. One in five Pennsylvanians is on Medicaid. Total Medicaid spending is 6.9 billion from the general fund this year and 26 billion including federal funds. Now as we look at what other states have done, how many people have come off welfare rolls and in, in initiatives that we're talking about? Looking at healthy adults on SNAP in Kansas, 75% of people. In Florida, 85% of people. Maine, 90%. And the estimate for Pennsylvania, 80 to 100,000, would be about 52 to 66%. The increase in economic growth, we're talking about higher incomes. What we've seen in Kansas already, 127, 127% income increase, 114% increase in Maine. And for Pennsylvania, with these estimates, it would leave us with about 175 million to 210 million in additional income. In Kansas, there was $3,000 in wage growth for every $2,000 lost in benefits. We're talking about solutions-oriented government here. We must ensure a safety net is there for those who truly need it while restoring the dignity of work. That will help Pennsylvanians realize their potential and achieve independence. Part of my focus is that we need to integrate work requirements and sliding scale benefits throughout the state's human services program. programming. We did that in 2015 with the child benefits cliff. The department's claims to have a work first, uh, work first approach, but too often work is watered down to job searching or job training. Enrollees should be rewarded, not punished, for increasing their incomes or working more hours. This means benefits should gradually phase out as incomes grow. This is already a feature of TANF, temporary assistance for needy families, but food stamps, housing subsidies, and medical assistance contain significant benefits cliffs, making benefits drop steeply at slight increases or work or income.